Hey everybody, it's Mr. N here, and we have another optimization problem. Uh, this is a one you guys requested, and this is the soda can problem. So let's take a look at what we have. It says a new soda can is going to be made to hold 16 fluid ounces. I changed it to 16 because we're used to seeing 12, so let's just go with 16. Find the dimensions that will minimize the amount of material used in its construction, assuming that the thickness of the material is uniform. So in other words, it has the same thickness all the way around, top, bottom, sides. And note that 16 fluid ounces is 28.875 cubic inches. All right, so what we have here is we've got a can. And in our can, we've got material that gets used. And we need to know what size to make this. Well, we've got a radius here. So that means we have a volume that we need to know. And the volume is pi r squared h. And we know our volume. So I'm going to do this problem in two different formats. The first format is I'm going to do it knowing the volume. The second format is I'm just going to generalize this because there is a pattern to all of these and you will see that. So let's go ahead and do it first with this and then generalize our problem. Well we also need a surface area because that's for our material and the surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. All right at this point what do we want? What are we trying to do? We are trying to use the least amount of material. We want to minimize this surface area. But you notice I've got two variables there. Well, I don't want to have two variables there. It's a lot harder to take the derivative of two variables. And I'll show you that when we generalize the problem. So let's use our volume that we're given. And that's 28.875. And this is going to be our pi r squared h. And I'm going to go ahead and solve this for h because it's easier not dealing with a root here. If I just get, solve for the h, I'll have an r. It'll uh, be easier to work with. So 28.875 over pi r squared is what my h is. Sorry, that equals h. And we're going to substitute this in. So my surface area ends up being 2 pi r. And this is 28.875 over pi r squared, which was my h plus my 2 pi r squared. Now, this is s in terms of r right here, because everything's in terms of r, and I want to take a derivative of that because I'm trying to minimize it. So cleaning this up, let's first clean it up before we take that derivative. So s of r is going to end up being 57.75 when I multiply it by 2, the pi's will reduce. One of those r's will go away. So 57.75 over r plus 2 pi r squared. So now let's take the derivative of that. And I'll end up with negative 57.75 r to the negative 2. So I'm going to put that over r squared plus 4 pi r. If you're not sure, I made this r to the negative 1 right here. I made this r to the negative 1, took the derivative, it became r to the negative 2. So I kind of skipped a step there. All right, so now, what do we want to do when we're trying to minimize something or maximize? We set it equal to 0. We want our critical points. So we set it equal to 0. We end up with 4 pi r squared equals 57.75 over r squared. 4 pi r. Cross multiply, you get r cubed equals 57.75 over 4 pi. R will end up being the cube root of that, which ends up being 1.663. Plug it in back to here, right here. Plug it into this one, and you'll get your h. And h comes out to be, uh, this is going to be 3.5. 325. Now you should notice something here. You should notice that twice the radius is that height. That's going to be a pattern that we see on all of these problems. And for this problem, we found the dimensions. But let's go ahead and take it a step further. And I'm going to generalize this and I'll do it on this half. So here's how we're going to generalize. And then you'll be able to use this for everything. 
whenever you're given any one of these problems, it doesn't matter what I come up with here, you just know that twice the radius will be the height. All right, so we are going to use both formulas again. <clears throat> and this time, since I want to minimize, I am going to, so another color, I'm going to find ds, and I'll do it dr. Again, you could go dh, but I chose to do it in terms of r because it's easier to solve for that h on this side over here. So this ends up being 2 pi. Now, I'm going to say first times the derivative of the second right here. First times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So I'm going to use the, the product rule on this r and h. So this becomes... 2 pi, and then it's going to be r. Now the derivative of h will be dh dr plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is the derivative of r, which is 1. Think of it as dr over dr, which it reduces to 1, if you want to think of it in those terms. Plus, now we're going to take the derivative of this 2 pi r squared right here. So we're taking the derivative of this one. And that ends up being 4 pi r dr, dr. Again, I took a derivative of r with respect to r, so it's just 1. So you could, again, put it in those terms. It's like when we do the y primes, and we don't put an x prime for this same reason. All right, so that's back to related rates over there. So we have ds, dr, and let's clean this up. This is going to be 4 pi r plus 2 pi r dh, dr, plus r2 pi h. We know our volume is 4 pi r squared h. I'm sorry, pi r squared h. Let's undo that here. Pi r squared h. And we, if we took a derivative here as well with respect to r, and why am I doing that? Because I'm trying to get a dh out of this. And if I can get a dh out of this, I can substitute that in there. And there's a reason why I'm taking this derivative. Let me take it first, and then I'll explain a little bit more about it. So this becomes pi r squared dh dr plus 2r, so I did the first times the derivative of the second, plus the second, so that's 2r, times the derivative of the first, which will be, I'm sorry, it's 2rh times dr over dr, right? Because the derivative of that r. So first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Again, right here. First times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So I end up with this. And cleaning this up a little bit, that goes away. So you just end up with pi times r squared dh dr plus 2rh. And if you go ahead and distribute this, we'll say dv dr equals pi r squared dh over dr plus 2 pi r h. Well, what is the change in volume? We don't have any. It's fixed. Our soda can is not changing size. So this goes to 0, and I can set this all equal to 0. And in this case, I will be able to solve for that dh dr. So let's go ahead and do that. So I set it equal to 0. And I'm going to solve for that dh dr, and I'm going to end up with dh dr equaling, now bring one over, divide, take the pi out. I'm going to kind of skip a couple steps here, so you end up with negative 2 pi rh over pi r squared. The pi is reduced. One of these r's is one of those. So you end up with dh dr equaling negative 2h over r. All right, so let's put this back into my ds dr equation right there. So that's going all the way back up to there. So I end up with ds dr equals 4 pi r plus 2 pi r, and this will be negative 2h over r plus 2 pi h. So ds dr, the change in surface area, will end up being 4 pi 
r minus 4 pi h plus 2 pi h. So ds dr cleans up to be 4 pi r minus 2 pi h right here. Okay, well, what do I want to do? I want to take and find a minimum. So I want to minimize my surface area. So I need this to be 0, right? Whenever we take the derivative, we just set it equal to 0 to find those critical points. I have a derivative, set it equal to 0. So we get 0 equals 4 pi r minus 2 pi h, and solve this. 2 pi h equals 4 pi r. Those reduce out. This divides out. h will be 2 r. And notice, that's what we said here. So it all comes together. We have this pattern. So how does that help you in a problem like this? Well, you know that h will always be 2 r in these problems. And so then, since you have the volume, you could just say 28 0.875 equals pi r squared h. You know this ratio, so 28.875 equals pi, and I know that the height is twice the radius, and then I could solve for r from there, and I'll get r is 1.663. And let's, we should put some units on these. These aren't inches, because I had inches cubed. So this is inches, and there you go. So, these cylinder problems all have the same pattern, and once you see this pattern, that the height will be twice the radius for these kind, you can always do it. And we proved why. We put it in the equation, we did it first, and then we showed and generalized why. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully you see and understand these patterns, and you can uh, do very well with the optimizations. So good luck with your optimization, and we'll talk to you next time.